And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Hi, my name is Jim Finley. Uh, my project is called Electric Lucifer, and it's uh, an electronic rock opera that takes place in the mind of a man who's being tortured. That audio, that audio track was the prologue, and it describes the war in heaven, which sends the main character, the electric Lucifer, hurtling down to earth, and it begins our story. Now, my collaborator, Bruce Hack, he couldn't be here, unfortunately, because he died in 1988. But uh, we're in touch, and when he heard I had to give a presentation <laughs> after lunch, I was worried it might be a little nappy. So he sent this video, so you to uh, maybe wake everybody up. You might want to stand for this. <laughs> Greetings, fellow robots. I hope oil goes well with you. In this lesson, you will move arms and legs. When you hear this sound, move your right arm. When you hear this sound, move your left arm. When you hear this sound, move one leg. When you hear this sound, move the other leg. Remember, right arm, left arm, one leg, the other leg. Here is your robot music. Do not rust until you can move to it. That was a song called School for Robots. Bruce Hack was an early electronic music pioneer, and beginning in the 1960s, he invented many of his own circuit-bent instruments. And in 1970, he had his own major label release, his only ma major label release on Columbia Records. And that record, Electric Lucifer, has been an obsession of mine for about 15 years, primarily out of a deep kinship with its obtuse weirdness and nerdy isolation. <laughs> Since then, I've harbored the dream of making that record into a musical, a giant fantasia of electronic acid rock weirdness that washes over the audience with power love. Now, <laughs> power love is Bruce's kind of weird Aquarian word for a new force so strong it could redeem even the worst of us, Lucifer. But when I really began to think about what Bruce meant by redeeming even the worst of us, I started to think about who of us is redeemable, is irredeemable. And I started to imagine Bruce's strange Bible story as a fever dream dreamt by that person. My electric Lucifer frames Hack, Hack's fantasia in the mind of an imprisoned man being tortured, isolated, and driven mad. Where, why, by who? Is he a terrorist? Perhaps. Or is he punishing himself? <coughs> Can even he be redeemed? I personally began making anti-theater theater in the mid-1990s with a small group of other outcasts in New York. We made work together under the name Collapsible Draft until around 2009 when everything blew up like it does. In 2011, I started to make work on my own, under my own name, and I have since made three original works. The first of these was Botanica, which is about the sentience of plants. You can see that the New York Times called it one of the year's most galvanizing moments of 2012, whatever that means. <laughs> it, it could have been the plant fucking. 
The second was Dream of the Red Chamber, a performance for a sleeping audience. Yeah, you heard that right. A sleeping audience. It premiered in 2014 in Times Square, presented by Times Square Arts as a free public event. We performed this durational invitation to sleep for 56 hours over eight days for an audience of about 3,000 sleeping and non-sleeping people. <laughs> My most recent work was Vine of the Dead, which we recently performed at the Invisible Dog Art Center in New York. And it is my skeptical but sincere attempt to contact my mother, who died in 1991. That show will be at Fusebox this next April, if anybody's heading to the festival there. And that brings me back to Electric Lucifer. Bruce's music is the heart of this piece, and I've recruited electronic composer, musician, and fellow insane circuit bender Philip White to develop new arrangements and to compose additional music. At this early stage, we've created 12 out of 15 MIDI uh, demo tracks that we think form the backbone of the show. And now, I'm gonna play one of those for you, along with some rehearsal footage from a very recent first rehearsal. It'll give you a little glimpse of some choreographic and visual vocabulary, and uh, yes, that is Okwe Hakpakwasili, who you will see in the video. to say that this isn't a tribute project. It's a new original work created in collaboration between myself, Bruce Hack, and our other collaborators. We're still in the early stages of development. We recently had a short uh, residency at Mount Tremper Arts and a week of staging workshop in New York City. At the end of August, we have studio time booked to record band demos. And this November, I'll be at McDowell for a few weeks, weeks along with uh, my esteemed colleagues who you'll see in a minute to uh, develop text and staging concepts. And we will present work in progress excerpts of the work in February of 2017 in New York City. Now, this is an ambitious project. It brings together all the threads of my own work into a surreal large scale spectacle. spectacle. And I believe the pop elements have the potential to energize a large audience, not just large theaters. I mean, hockey rinks, ballparks, stadiums, the kingdom. <laughs> I'm looking for commercial partners and investors who believe audiences want more, not less, crave things they haven't seen before, and still want to have their minds blown. So if you know anyone who's looking to get involved with a, uh, you know, weird acid rock electronica music fantasia spectacle, you know, into stadiums, <laughs> send them my way. <laughs> and, uh, and also, if anybody knows the uh, founders and producers of the Moog Fest in North Carolina, I would love to meet those guys too. Thank you. 